the media space gets saturated with news stories and tributes pouring in and eulogizing the lives of leaders and outstanding individuals when they die. That's sad, because the dead cannot hear or watch all the great things that the living speak of them. John News wants to cut this convention and start real conversations about greatness. So Ghana's Greats, a documentary series that tells the stories of phenomenal leaders and the achievements of great personalities, has been introduced to highlight the work of these persons while alive. This week, John News premieres the life of former president John Ejekunkufo on Ghana's Greats. We have had a whole lot of witnesses from all walks of life. In 2002, Kofor set up a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to examine abuses of power occurring under the five governments that had ruled Ghana since 1966. Ghana's economy was really struggling at the time. So Kofor announced the Highly Indebted Poor Country Initiative. The first one, the Hepic Initiative. It was hot debate in the country. The clergyman will say, how do you say we are poor? This, if we say we are poor, we will become poor. The top economist, no way. His own company, no way. But Kofi said, this is the way we are, we are going. A good leader sometimes has to be autocratic. This is the way we are going. And he took the HIPIC initiative and we all know the results. Plenty of money to build schools, universities, polytechnics, roads. And every small village you see a sign, HIPIC fund, if you remember. Fantastic, bold decision. We have the few problems of uh, a dislocated economy to work on. The country was bankrupt. Worse than it is uh, perhaps today, people think we were bankrupt in 2016 or whatever. The country was bankrupt. That's what led to the declaration of the HIPIC status, you see. And even that HIPIC, some of his own ministers opposed it. But as courageous as he was, he announced it. Why do we go HIPIC? Some kind of pride. But the fact is that we were bankrupt. And nobody has asked why we were bankrupt. Because there was a leader then, isn't it? There was a leader for 19 years who ran this country down. Nobody ever raised that question. At that time, people were afraid. Still, people are even afraid to refer to the fact that those years made us bankrupt as a nation, you see. So being able to go hippic and rising from those ashes and building the economy, if you looked at all the economic indicators before he left office. I'm not an economist, but I have a I have the common sense to know that all the indicators were positive plus. We must create jobs for our people. We must make sure that things change and we are determined to change things. I told somebody, I took Ghana to hip it. I will take Ghana out of hip it. That's right. One of the most important steps he took uh, was that of hip it. And, uh, you know, those who were present when those decisions were made. I, I saw another side of it, but those who were present when those decisions were made in cabinet would tell you that almost nobody supported the decision. But I, I mean, at home, I, I saw him working the phones with powers that be. I, I saw him making commitments saying that if he could get X, Y, and Z, he would do this or the other. And it, it was clear he knew what he was doing. He had decided by then, and again, this is from discussions that I had with him, he decided by then that the country was broke, the system was broke. And if he didn't do this, then what was he going to do to succeed? And he was quite certain in his own mind that there was certain radical steps had to be taken or that his, that government of his was not going anywhere. So his point was, if, if you don't support me, then give me an alternative. When this, we have to go out of hippie, 
But there were some things we have to do. We don't have to increase salaries and all not. Yeah. The, the labor of fighting for TUC. labor. If we do that, we couldn't get out of uh, Hepic. So what did it do? So invited leadership, TUC, NAT, other associations, to a conference, sat them down, talked and talked and talked. These are the realities. We can increase wages for you now. We are not saying that wages shouldn't be increased. But what we are saying, let's stop it now and do it later. If we want us to do it, if force us to do it, we may do that. But the, or to the outcome of that will be this, which will affect all of mm. us. At the end of it, that he came to say, Mr. President, we we'll go with you. We we'll agree. And we're able to come out of Epic earlier. More on this documentary later tonight at 8 p.m. Do make a date.